Hi everyone, welcome back to our channel. Today we are going to discuss about the various types of motors used in electric vehicles. Okay, the first type of motor what we are using is induction motor, and the next type of motor we are going to discuss is synchronous motor. Already you know this. What is meant by an induction motor? So here you can see here we have two types of motors. So this induction motor is generally comes under this actually works with the principle of uh, induction so that's why these motors are called induction motors so these motors are widely used in electric vehicle applications and hybrid electric vehicle applications this induction motor doesn't have commutator so this motor also called commutation less motor type so why this induction motor is preferred is basically these induction motors are of a low cost and second feature is this induction motor doesn't has a carbon brushes and commutator so they have more life or more reliability next one since there is no copper brushes and commutator so these are called maintenance free motors okay so since these two are not used they have like maintenance free operation motors so no need to maintain regularly so due to wide operations in ev due to computation less due to low cost and high life and uh, non availability of copper and uh, commutators these motors are more popular it's very simple uh, this motor is you have an stator so to this stator we are going to give r yb i am considering an three phase induction motor this produces a rotating magnetic field and in this rotor in this we are going to place the rotor so due to the rotating magnetic field produce this interacts with the rotor and automatically and emf is induced as per the concept of induction then as per this induction concept so there exists an interaction between this emf in the stator and emf in the rotor automatically the induction motor starts working when you come to the types of rotors we are going to have two types of rotors in this induction motor so first one is we are having an squirrel gauge you can see here this is called squirrel gauge rotor of an induction motor next one is a wound rotor okay let's try to see here how the construction is there so when you come to the squirrel gauge so here you are going to have the laminated cores and you have the copper bars okay so core is there in between the core you have the copper bars these copper bars are short circuited with the metallic rings at the front side and at the back end so you can see here this is nothing but the metallic rings okay so this is metallic ring 1 and this is metallic ring 2 and they are skewed with some sort of angle so here you can see here a gold colored one which is nothing but uh, the copper bars so this is a squirrel gauge rotor which is very strong in construction and mechanically also is very strong it can be used uh, for multiple applications and there is you can see here it since they they are giving the supply only to the stator and rotor with the help of this squirrel gauge it starts working okay and coming to the next type of rotor is nothing but a wound rotor so here in this wound rotor so here what you are going to have is uh, here you have an iron core this is nothing but a laminated core in this laminated core we are going to have uh, this this nothing but the core in this uh, sleeving you are going to have the windings okay you can see the coils uh, the starting and ending like this the coils are wound like this and they are bought out and this windings are connected to this uh, slip ring okay so these are bought out and they are connected to the slip rings and these slip rings has an contact with the copper brushes so if you have a very good required uh, initial high torque then you can use this uh, uh, squirrel gauge types of rotors so all these windings this winding one and similarly you have another set of uh, winding so you have another set of winding to start the winding and will wound like this and will bought out and it is uh, short circuited to the ends okay so like this we are going to short circuit so like this you can see here uh, you have this kind of rotor where you have multiple connections uh, we can due to this rotors okay
so when you see this uh, you can understand uh, more clearly so you have the iron core on this iron core we had given some multiple windings are bounded and they are connected to the spiral gauge so this is all about uh, the types of induction motor rotors and the stator is like an uh, a just a coil a iron core is there in this iron core it is uh, having some number of slots it is made to rotate uh, with some synchronous speed of uh, 120 f by p okay so when you this is all about uh, the induction motors uh, so actually the conventional how we are going to control the speed of uh, conventional induction motor is uh, actually the formula for flux phi is equal to v by f we can use voltage control method as well as we can use a frequency control method so this v by variable voltage so we have an auto transformer by using auto transformer we are going to vary the voltage therefore flux phi is equal to v by f we are varying the voltage the flux gets changed automatically the flux is directly proportional to emf the emf is also going to change in the stator part as well as the rotor part and the stator the rotor tries to catch the speed of the stator automatically the rotor starts rotating this is what happening in a conventional induction motor speed control but the power electronic device are not so matured to control the frequency therefore uh, the variation of frequency is possible only with the help of power electronic devices therefore we can control the frequency but the latest type of controlling the frequency we have is uh, the latest technology in this ic engine is nothing but uh, the principle of field orientation control so there is an technique called as field orientation control by using this latest we can control the field current where this is generally called popularly as foc and next latest in speed control method is a vector control of induction motor so we can use this uh, vector control of induction motors also okay so generally this electric and hybrid electric vehicle if you use this field orientation control what happens is uh, so in electric vehicle if you make it as a hybridization with ic engine so this electric and hybrid electric vehicle we are going to use the technique of field orientation control if you use this field orientation control of speed control what it is going to happen is it is going to offer higher efficiency at light loads at light loads only it is offering higher efficiency and it gives us an constant power throughout the operating range so throughout the operating range of the electric vehicle it is going to offer uh, an higher efficiency uh, sorry so this is going to offer lower efficiency at light load uh, and this is offering higher efficiency at uh, peak loads okay so already you know this uh, characteristics of an speed power torque characteristics uh, when you draw the speed power torque characteristics so this is speed and this is nothing but torque and this is nothing but power so we will getting the characteristics already we explained in multiple classes we will be getting here the torque and speed are inversely proportional here torque is constant but in this region power is constant so this is called as a critical speed this is uh, minimum speed minimum speed and this is maximum speed so here you can have our electric vehicle is designed at this point so you can have uh, speed is inversely proportional to 1 by t at low speeds they can offer high torque but when you come to this point speed is inversely proportional to 1 by t here at higher speeds also it can offer lower torque this what the importance of this induction motor speed control these characteristics are nothing but the characteristics of a dc motor all the motors where these characteristics plays a major role where these characteristics is also similar to the traction motor characteristics requirement these characteristics are also developed by induction motor that's why we can have the complete control on this motor now let us try to understand about uh, the induction motor 
part of uh, controlling the speeds is completed now let's try to come to the synchronous motors okay so when you come to the synchronous motor this is a uh, very simple so in synchronous motor what you have to understand is uh, this synchronous motor or reverse to that of an dc motor okay so synchronous motor consists of uh, stator as well as the rotor okay so in this uh, stator and rotor for example uh, you are having the rotor here and here you are having the stator this rotor is made up of uh, field winding and this stator is made up of uh, armature winding where this is reverse to the of an a dc motor the parts are reverse so you have the stator and you have the rotor and the rotor what you are going to have in general in a dc motor you are going to have the armature winding and in the stator part you are going to have the field winding but reverse so the same rotor is there stator is there rotor you have to change with field winding and the stator you have to change with armature winding but here this field winding is an electromagnet you are going to give the dc supply and magnetic field is uh, produced across this and we are going to replace this permanent i mean field winding with an permanent magnet uh, so by using this uh, permanent magnet we can produce resultant amount of flux okay so that's how we are having uh, so in this uh, synchronous motor this also comes under the concept of uh, uh, double field i mean we are going to feed the power two times uh, so these are called double fed motors so generally for synchronous motor you have to give the supply to the stator armature winding as well as the field winding but we are overcoming that problem rather than giving an dc supply to the field winding we are directly replacing the electromagnet with a permanent magnet and we have to give the supply only to the armature winding and automatically it starts rotating so this is all about uh, we are having the uh, synchronous motor okay so the main concept of this synchronous motor we can uh, visualize here so this synchronous motor we are going to have the what are the parts we are going to have you can see here So in the synchronous motor coming to the construction so already i told this synchronous motor we are going to have two parts and this part is called as a rotor part and this part is called stator part to so this rotor part we are going to have the field winding and the stator part we are going to have the armature winding so this is the rotor and this uh, all these windings is wounded and it is bought across uh, the slip ring so these are the three slip rings uh, so very high slip ring and these slip rings has an carbon brushes are attached to the slip ring why because you have to excite in the case of an so here the type of field winding we are taking like an electromagnet uh, we need to excite uh, so we are going to give the supply through the carbon brushes and through carbon brushes it comes to the slip ring and it goes into the field winding and this acts like an electromagnet and here flux is produced but here in the stator you are going to have the armature winding so you can see here this is nothing but the armature winding so it's wrongly given so this is nothing but uh, the field winding so the we have the rotor part and coming to the stator part so to this stator part we are going to have the armature winding so armature is nothing but uh, some set of conductors if you connected in a uh, sequence of 120 degrees phase shift then uh, it's called armature winding and this armature winding is connected to the supply so this armature winding you are going to connect the ac supply to this field winding you are going to connect the dc supply how many supplies are fed the supply one supply two so that's why these sort of motors are called as a double fed motors so what i explained here is also the same so these are called double fed motors and here to cool it we have the cooling fan so this part the importance of an synchronous motor and if you replace this field winding with an permanent magnet then these sort of motors are called as a permanent magnet 
synchronous motors so these are called permanent magnet synchronous motors so here already it's told you have the rotor part and you have the stator part so in this uh, rotor part so in this rotor part we are having the field winding which is an electromagnet so this electromagnet we are going to replace with an uh, the permanent magnets which the target is to produce the flux so but here to the stator part we are going to have the armature winding so if you excite the stator part it is sufficient then automatically so this uh, double filled i mean how many supplies generally we give for synchronous motors double fed there is no need of double fed only this double fed motors will be converted into single fed motors so this is all about the permanent magnet synchronous motor now let's try to see what are the advantages of this permanent magnet synchronous motors this permanent magnet synchronous motors eliminate the use of carbon brushes so why they have been eliminated is so here if you want to use this kind of assembly so we want to use carbon brushes and slip rings and you have to give the supply to the rotor so when you are eliminating it by using an permanent magnet so the carbon brushes are eliminated next one the slip ring assembly is also eliminated and due to this the field winding is having some copper so the field winding copper losses are also eliminated so carbon brushes you are eliminating slip rings you are eliminating and field winding copper is there that copper loss are also we are going to eliminate all these are possible replacing the rotor rather than with an electromagnet with permanent magnet so the rotor part only we are changing but stator part we are not going to change this is about the double fed induction i mean uh, the single fed synchronous motor and these motors are also capable of having wide speed range operation so they have the capability of wide speed range so they can be varied from 10 rpm to 3000 rpm also so they have wide range of speed control that is also possible so here to the armature you can directly give an three phase supply and there is no need of supply giving to the rotor okay and this permanent magnets are present on the rotor part so this will try to create the required flux and the synchronous motor starts working and this is the next type of motor which is called as a synchronous reluctance motor so that we will discuss in upcoming session so this is all about the importance of an induction motor so first one is squirrel gauge so in the squirrel gauge you are going to have end rings and you are going to have the copper bars and you are going to short circuit with the help of metal rings and this nothing but squirrel gauge so you have the iron core and you have the set of windings and this way it's like a, a wound rotor i mean uh, uh, winding is wound so here we are going to wind the winding that's why this called wound rotor and coming to the synchronous motor construction so it has lot of uh, advantages so low cost high efficiency and uh, there is no carbon brushes and commutators and they have maintenance free and coming to our this motor also using the field orientation control techniques and coming to our synchronous motor just we have the stator rotor the rotor is made up of uh, field winding so this is reverse to that of an uh, dc motor so to the rotor we have field winding this field winding rather than giving an electromagnet we are using a permanent magnet so therefore they will act like an permanent magnet synchronous motor so we by using a permanent magnet we eliminated the carbon brushes we eliminated the slip ring and we eliminated the field winding copper losses due to this permanent magnet synchronous motor having having an wide range of speed operation so hope uh, the content is very useful to you and this is all about the construction parts you can understand how the assembly of brushes is there slip rings are there and how it rotates this is all about the induction motor and synchronous motor used in ev applications as well as hybrid electric vehicle application if you feel the content is useful so sometimes i go a little bit fast sometimes i'll go a little bit slow 
always try to bear such a way that we are ready to share multiple knowledge required for the domain of electric vehicle. If you feel the video is useful, please give one like, please share with your friends and if you have any doubts, let's try to know in the comment section. I will answer in my free time. So, if you feel the content is uh, useful, if you are first time watching the content, please subscribe our channel and please try to promote uh, this kind of uh, useful channels to the students uh, for the development of society and for the development of students uh, yours obediently wrong so we'll meet in the next session and we'll try to discuss about uh, synchronous i mean srm motors okay so synchronous reluctance motors uh, in the upcoming session thank you for watching